So beginning band clarinets, um, today we are going to work on these and we're going to do some warm-ups as well. We're going to um, remind ourselves about alternate fingerings too um, on the clarinet and um, do some breathing exercises just to warm up our body. So let's start with a big breath in. Think about O when you inhale and as quiet as you can so that you don't sound, uh, so that you're not using a tense kind of tightened throat. This would be too loud, <gasps> right? So you want silent O and then out ho. Inward. Then again. And one more time. Okay, good. So uh, we're going to start with page 41, 132D. And then we're going to talk about some alternate fingerings that it, they're showing underneath there. So anytime I go too fast, just hit the pause and rewind me. Um, so 132D, if you look at the time signature, how many beats per measure? three and look at the key signature what key are we in the key of f yes there is a flat but that doesn't mean we're in the key of b flat so key of f um, that means that if we have a b flat that means the second measure we're not playing a b natural okay so be careful with that um, when do we go over the break which measure the third measure, we go up to a C, okay? And then you'll see underneath 132D, uh, in between the yellow and the notes is RHD and a big long line. And that means right hand down. So you're gonna keep your right hand as close to the keys as possible. Um, you'll start with probably having them down and as you get better and it gets um, easier to go over the break, then you can lift them slightly. Always feel the rings. Okay. All right. Um, hopefully you can see all this easily. Uh, here we go. We're going to start on the F and we're going to go really slow. When we get to the B flat, we're going to go up to the C. So look how close my fingers are. B flat to C. Also, another thing to remember is when you go B flat, that you're using the side of your finger. Hopefully you can see that. The side of your finger. Okay, here we go. One and two and three. <laughs> If you went on the third measure or something like this, that means that your hands weren't quite in the right place um, and you had to kind of position them to get up. So make sure that your hands are ready to go to that C. When you're on the B flat, everything is just really close to the key. See my left hand here? See how close I am? And then my right hand, see how close I am, okay? Um, let's practice going from B flat to C a few times. We're going to do B flat, C, like that. Ready, and. Okay, if that was easy, see if you can try quite, uh, twice as fast. Da, 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 da. Ready and okay, that's a good exercise to do to make sure you keep your hands down. All right, now we're going to go to alternate fingerings. If you look at the yellow part of the book, um, you'll see there are three different fingerings for B and two different fingerings for C. And remember, this is not B flat. This is regular B. Okay, so this is review. The first fingering is 
the inside long key, and then this key at the bottom for your right pinky. Okay. That's the main fingering that I encourage everybody to use the most. Um, when you have your right pinky down here, then it makes it a lot easier to go over the break and to go back and forth between um, pitches. All right, the next alternate fingering is just leaving that right pinky off and just using the left pinky where there's the inside long key here, if you can see that. Okay, um, that's also one of the main fingerings. Uh, it is called uh, alternate because it's not as common as the first one. Notice the first one on the left side does not say alternate. Okay, let's go to the middle one now in the yellow bar. Another alternate fingering for B is your right pinky. If you can see that. And my right pinky is um, got to be pretty strong, pretty firm when you're going that way. You don't want to use this fingering as your main fingering, remember. Okay, and then C, the main fingering for C, it doesn't say alternate above it, notice, is just your pinky in that same spot as we had just talked about for B. Only B, of course, uses another um, key. Okay, then the alternate fingering for C, which we haven't really talked about a whole lot, is you go to the long keys with your left pinky, and then the one that's closest to the C sharp key is the alternate C. Hopefully you can see that. Okay, those are your alternate fingerings. Make sure that you are very familiar with them. How do you get familiar with them? You have to play them. How do you play them? Well, look at the page 41. There's a lot of exercises that will help you do that. Um, it's kind of like eating your vegetables. It's something that's not the most fun, but it'll help you be a lot more fluid on your instrument. Okay, now we're going to go to 144. And let's see, what page is that on? That is on page 33. All right, so today I'm going to play both of those. And what is the tempo for that? Largo. And Largo is pretty darn slow. Okay. Um, a, it says chorale, but this is actually a hymn. Um, I'm going to put my metronome on 72. Um, this is uh, the title of the hymn, Escapes Me, but I know some of the words. See his hands, his, uh, see his something, his hands, his feet. Sorrow and blood flow mingled down. Um, your parents will know this more than me. Okay, <laughs> but uh, in Easter hymn. Okay, so because it's so slow, you got to have a lot of lungs. So the challenge is to try to make it to each rest without taking a breath. Look at the dynamics. Me medium soft to what? Medium loud. And how many measures does it take to get louder? And how many measures does it take to get softer? Two each. Okay. Um, let's look at the end. The tempo changes. You see a retard there. You're also getting softer. And you're getting softer down to a piano. First time you see piano in the song. And then the little arch with the dot at the end means fermata. Hold the note until you see the cutoff. Okay, look at your key signature. You're in the key of F again. That means that all the Bs are flat. Um, you don't have to go over the break on this song. This is a phrasing song. This is a song that helps you with air support. Okay, so I'm going to start with playing the top line. You can play the top line with me or you can play the bottom line. I'm going to play the bottom line after this. Okay, here we go. One, two, oh, I forgot to say, there is a forte. Notice how there's fortes on the second system. That means it's getting more dramatic. Okay, so Dynamics make songs sound more interesting, more musical, more like actual music as opposed to something like boring notes going by. All right, here we go. One, two, ready. <laughs>
job. Notice how I took it out of time and the retard at the end. Um, clarinet players uh, sometimes do what we call wah-wahs. And wah-wahs are when you crescendo too early. And it sounds kind of like this. So it's kind of like going on a road with those a gentle speed bumps <laughs> where you just kind of it's 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 you are robbing the the final effect of the crescendo so you have to make sure that you build slowly keep your airstream um, consistent all the way through sustain it as if you're just going up slowly but surely um, up a hill and then back down um, think also about the dynamics is going down in steps not with your air but thinking about volume levels here we are forte Turn it down to mezzo forte, turn it down to mezzo piano, that sort of thing. Okay, let's do the second line. Uh, notice the accidental in there for an F sharp. Both times, the top and the bottom uh, systems, that is. All right, here we go. One, two, starts off. And... <laughs> Good job. Okay, let's go to our next one, 147. Turn the page over once. Ricochet Rock. This is actually a pretty challenging song. Um, there's a lot of skipping, uh, lots of different accidentals thrown in there. Um, there's accents, and uh, it just sounds like it's kind of disjointed while you're playing it. There's also the clapping part. So it does say Allegro. I am gonna play it pretty fast. Um, you can listen to how it's supposed to go and then um, build up to that tempo eventually. That's Allegro, woo! Allegro is oftentimes 120. Okay, I won't be that mean to you. I'll go down to 112, <laughs> all right? Okay, one thing that musicians a lot of times skip, uh, instrumentalists, is uh, slurs. And you just kind of do it willy-nilly whenever you want. Make sure that you are slurring the right slurs and tonguing um, at the right time. Okay? Um, so let's look at those accidentals. You start with, um, you're in the key of G. One sharp is F sharp. But uh, in the first pickup uh, bar, you see there's an F natural. Um, do you ever play an F sharp in the song? No, you never play an F sharp in the song. Why do we have it in the key of G if you never play a sharp, an F sharp in the song? Well, it ends on G and its emphasis is around the key of G. So this is actually um, a blues song and uh, I haven't talked to you very much about blues at all but there's something called the 12-bar blues, and this kind of follows the 12-bar blues. It doesn't mean that the song has to be 12 bars, by the way. It just means that it's, um, it's following a certain kind of sound, bluesy, from uh, the 40s and the 50s in, uh, in uh, the 1900s. Okay, and now let's look. Uh, there's also B-flats. And then you look uh, at the accents. So be careful that um, you are accenting those B-flats. So... And sometimes to make an accent um, more forceful is not to hit it harder, but to actually lengthen the note um, to sort of emphasize it, but not sound like you're pounding it too much. Okay, then you look at the very last note. It's a quarter note fermata. So that means you're not going to hold on to it forever. Doesn't sound like it fits the song if you do. So you're just going to go last measure. 
and be done. Okay? All right, so forte, and I'm going to play the top line, and then I'll do the clapping part. I'll give you a one, two, breathe, da, da, da. Here we go. One, two... You can play the song while I'm doing the clapping part um, for fun, uh, or you can do the clapping part with me, uh, or as I'm playing the top part, whatever you want to do. Okay, so this is going to be with the pickup, so I'm going to say one, two, three, then we're going to start the rest. Also pay attention to those diagonals with the two dots on either side. That means it's a measure repeat. So they want you to repeat just one measure that you just finished doing two times. And that happens twice in the song. Um, notice there's a tom ti ta in the middle. And what else is important? Uh, the way the song ends is on a rest ta ta. Now you might wonder why is there fermata over my clapping part? They just want to be the same as the top part. You can't really fermata a clap. <laughs> All right, so here we go. I think I'm going to say. No, I'm not going to say the rest. Maybe I'll say it at first, but then I'll be quiet. Here we go. And one, two, three. Rest, rest. Okay? All right. I had a lot of fun today. Hopefully this was helpful for you. Um, let me know if you have any questions about it. Also, if you want any lessons, I'm here to help. Talk to you soon.